For item number one in the list that we made on the previous slide, the first thing we need to change in the code is NN, the number of nodes. Currently we have NN is NE plus one, the number of elements plus one. Since we only added one new node at the center of each element, the total number of nodes is equal to what we had before plus NE, one more for every element. And you can simplify that expression. Next, I'll talk about number three, solving for the new KE coefficients. To develop the KE coefficients, we'll follow the same steps as before for linear elements. That is, we'll write the weak form of the equation as before, but now we'll, we'll write it three times. So we have W1, and I'll write this once, and then we'll We'll reuse it, beta squared EZ, DX is zero. So here's the first one. Here we'll have W2 with the same thing there. And now we'll also have W3. So these correspond to the three nodes for every element. We can again use the Galerkin approach. So we can use W is equal to N, W1 is equal to N1, W2 is equal to N2, and W3 is equal to N3. Then the expansion of EZ is now a summation from one to three instead of two. EZJ for the element times NJX. And the matrix equation also has the same form, except now it's expanded to have three nodes, KE11, KE, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, all of these have element written in the subscript, and so forth for all through all of these. All right, and then that is multiplied times easy 1, easy two, easy three. And on the right side, we have something that's equivalent to what we had for linear elements, minus the easy dx, evaluated at x equal x1, the left node. We're gonna have zero at the internal node because the derivative will be, it'll be continuous the the solution will be continuous so the derivative will be zero and here it's uh, evaluated at x2 so all the internal nodes will again be equal to zero and after the global assembly the boundary conditions will be applied to the very first and the last terms of the global right hand side array just like we had before for linear elements the form of this ke coefficients will also be the same as before. So from x1 to x2, and we're going to have dni x dx, dnjx dx, minus ni x beta squared njx dx. So this is the same form as what we had before. The only difference now is that the ends here are now quadratic. And so the derivatives will also be different. So here it is written again, much nicer. To help us evaluate the integrals in these KE matrix coefficients, we want to evaluate them only once, just as for linear elements. So we'll want to perform a coordinate transformation to the master element. And this again will extend from minus one to one in psi coordinates. And to perform the coordinate transformation, we can use the same expressions that we derived earlier for linear elements. So here for dx, we said that dx is L, the length of the element, divided by two d psi d n i, so these terms right here, dx 
will be dNi d psi, d psi dx, and we had said earlier that d psi dx is equal to 2 over the length of the element. So the main difference here is that we should use the new interpolation functions for n, right here, here and here, and also we'll have to reevaluate this right here, d n d psi. Since the interpolation functions are quadratic, the integrals, this resulting integral, will be a bit more work to evaluate. Now, in the interest of time, I'm not going to ask you to go through all the steps to evaluate the Ke matrix for quadratic elements. If you do carry out all the, all the steps that are discussed on the previous two slides, you should hopefully end up with what's shown here. So go ahead and program this into your code. For convenience, I did post a short code with this Ke matrix already programmed into it. So you can just copy it into your code if you like, instead of copying it down from this slide. The file is posted along with the PowerPoint slides for this lecture.